back up and going on the pineapple glitch. Still here at uh, Bishop Estates headquarters for uh, Landlord and Justice. And uh, we got uh, Bishop Estates that's in control of uh, money that was left to the Hawaiians to be able to utilize for living, cost of living, uh, many many of things. And they're what they're basically doing is creating a slumlord type of attitude by allowing, uh, like this particular family here, uh, four floods that devastated their home and destroyed their home with four, four different floods. So they spent h hundreds of thousands of dollars to rebuild and get everything done. And in response, Bishop Estates said, we're going to evict you. So now we are uh, here to show that uh, we won't deal with this. This is an injustice towards not only this family, but Hawaiians and the community, Hawaii in general. You know, corporate greed is what has uh, started all this, and uh, we're not going to tolerate it here at Occupy Honolulu. <laughs> this will be the third, uh, part three, I guess you would say, of uh, filming this particular area as this uh, action has been going on. If you guys want to uh, go farther back into in the, the past two uh recordings and you'll see some really interesting uh, uh, interviews that'll bring you up to par on exactly what's been going on out here. So uh, stay tuned and I'll uh, see if I can get some more interviews and uh, show you. As you can see, Hawaii is definitely liking uh, what this is about. They fully understand and uh, they're tired of it. People are tired of it. You have the biggest real estate agent here in Hawaii, Bishop Estate, that is control of uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars that is supposed to set aside along with land that was set aside for use for the Hawaiians here. And uh, their attitude is just to kick them out. They want the use for other, land, uh, other purposes, like uh, it's known that Bishop Estates supports uh, GMO farming and it's allowed a lot of the Hawaiian lands to be uh, degraded to uh, GMO, and uh, which is an unsustainable seed source. And uh, who knows what kind of problems uh, humans will have after 20 30, years, 20, 30 years of consumption of this type of food. And, uh, huh? Seen the what? We're number one, man. We're the number one in cancer, um, cancer. We're number one in um, federal poverty levels. We're number one in the mismanagement and prioritization of our natural resources, at the foreign, even at the foreign expense. I mean, with Bishop Estate, the city is too immense. Not only is it like Bishop Estate Hawaiian, land, but it's a lot of it. And like, there's a huge conflict of interest with with so they, they give like two million, something like two million dollars a month or something like that. Something like that. Something like that. They're transnational, and it's okay for them to do it. I mean. That's easy money. Well, I'll catch them right. So, I mean, not, and, and not only that, it's like all this land which is supposed to be utilized to help educate Hawaiian non Hawaiian is being used instead to make to make a, 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 a I guess, a, a scanner that's a little bit more, uh, less efficient than what it's supposed to be like, right? So, like, um, a lot of people say, oh, my son got into a Kamehameha school. That's, that's an honor. I'm like, anyone should get into a Kamehameha school. If you read Bishop Bernice Ka'ahi Bishop's Bible in the past, you can see she didn't, even, she didn't care about Hawaiian children. She just cared about children and the education of them. So when we take land and to utilize instead of to make it into something that's a little bit less than what we're supposed to do, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, while there is a chance for them to do, what, to do what's right, and while there is a lot of money and research to be utilized in the Bishop Estate, a lot of it's going to one place. And that's just another definite prime example of the 1% versus 99% Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Go team. Go team. <laughs> Stop making money right now. So earlier, earlier we were speaking, and you had a little story that you were sharing with me about uh, how Bishop Estates uh, kind of started and uh, uh, who actually was running the show, what, what partners devised this whole Bishop Estate. Well, Bishop Estates has been around for a real long time. It was part of the... the 
Bishop fa Bishop family, which was the landowners that married into royalty, and when they rose, when they married into royalty, they uh, took the money from the land and said we're going to give it to Kamehameha School as the uh, for education. Okay, so that was a good thing. You know, it, it was in the will, uh, and Bishop Estate has been doing that for many years. The problem is, Bishop Estate has become the landowner for the majority of the island. So they control how much land is owned by the public. And what in Hawaii we have is what's called leasehold land. A leasehold is that you have a lease on the land for a hundred years. So some of these leases are about to go run out. And when these leases run out, the property that's on it becomes owned by Bishop Estate. So basically the home or any structures, whatever was put onto this property. They own it. Okay? So, in a situation like this, Bishop Estate doesn't care what's on the property. They don't care about the infrastructure around the home. The, the, the drainage, the sewage, the electricity. They don't care. Now most developments in Hawaii, if you develop a place, you're you're going to have to pay for that infrastructure cost. The city and county is not going to pay it out of their budget. But Bishop Estate, since they own a lot of property in Hawaii, they get away with this stuff. They don't. And they end up saying, "Well, this is the Hawaiian homelands. We're going to go and we're going to throw in stuff. We're going to bypass putting in this infrastructure." And they've been doing that on the Big Island. That's why they have. A lot of areas that are that are not are substandard is because they have not been putting in the infrastructure. That's why there's a lot of lots on the Big Island that have no electricity and no water. So we want to do something about that. And Bishop Estate and um, Iron Workers have actually done something. They've been working on lots for houses. But the problem is they've been working it on Oahu. And Oahu, there's just not enough land on this island. They really need to go to the Big Island. They need to start Big Island is where most of the property would be that to utilize the yeah. programs that you're talking about. And, and develop some of these jobs, the infrastructure, uh, telecommunication jobs where you, you can work over the internet. And they're working on that. Um, we now... That would be the iron workers? Iron workers is actually... If you go and look up uh, Bodger Housing in Hawaii, you'll actually see they built a factory at Barber's Point. And uh, it went bankrupt because they, they didn't have enough sales, but they were making homes made out of steel. And uh, the steel homes are, are, are made for movement. Now, people in Hawaii, they don't like uh, trailer parks, right. but they want to have homes that they can, they can move because you have leasehold land, and your land runs out, you want to keep your house. So by having a home that's built sturdy and is movable, you pick it up and move it to another lot. Now, or you could sell that asset, but you don't have. If you bought the home, you should be able to sell it. Right. And as it is right now, the Bishop State holds all the cars. So those are things that we should be looking at. Making it, uh, laws that allow for homes to be made so they, they can be moved from a lot. So if the property is not owned, you can move it. And then well, it gives a chance for the homeowner to be able to still keep some of the money that they put into these properties instead of losing it. Off. Yeah, well, basically what it is is uh, people are now developing these lands that Bishop Estates is in control of, and now they have a majority of even more money that's usable to them once these leases run out. And some of the leases are short. Some of the, some of the land is not being developed because they want to develop bigger things there. But they don't want to have a short lease. So if you had a short lease, let's say five years, nobody's going to want a five-year lease if they're going to lose their property on it. But if they had a house that could be moved, they yeah, they lease the property for five years and then move off it in five years. And then they could develop whatever they want and they, the land would still belong to them. So that would be good for Bishop Estate. That would be good for the, the, the public. That'd be good for the wise. That would be good across the board. So those are the kind of things that they need to look into. Well, it would help, our, help the local economy for, oh, uh, for Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. You know. So, you know, those those are the kind of things you got to look at. Instead of building homes like we always did, making them out of wood, you should be looking at building them in factories. By building them in factories, they make the, the, the home stronger, sturdier. You have to worry about termites. And, you know, all these things that... They, 
you know, a better quality home. Well, we live in the tropics, so we have a lot more bugs. We have weather conditions that are consistent out here to uh, rot away wood structures is what you're getting at. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and um, you can build homes where they're, they're open in their air. Um, I went and visited a, um, a home that was built from a shipping container in Waimanalo. And the, the roof of it was made from canvas, and it was solar panel ca canvas. And um, they had it made so that it looked like the inside looked like a regular home with nice wood paneling and everything, and it was off the ground, and it, was, it uh, had a, a, a system where even if you were in the desert, it would make water from the um, electricity, just like a, a air conditioning system that sucks the water out of the air and it would actually provide water even when you didn't have water. So now you're talking about sustainability for these yeah. same homes. Yes, for these same, same owners. So those are the kind of things we need to be looking at. We need to look, make homes that are not necessarily right for the mainland, but they're right for Hawaii. Well, yeah, if we, if we create another infrastructure that allows the money that's being spent on these properties and Bishop Estates' money at the same time that's allotted for Hawaiians and other people, it, it'll actually stretch in the long run the usability of what, what Bishop Estates is trying to perform. Right. And right now it's just become a slumlord attitude of, well, don't do anything, let them do what they want, and when... Uh, if they don't agree with it, we kick them out, or we'll keep them there until the lease is over, and then we give it to Monsanto or some some other entity, so they keep making their corporate money instead of trying to help individuals. Right. And, and, you know, for the longest time, we had Hawaiians for many, many years that didn't have homeland. They didn't have a place to live. And, you know, it was like, hey, we can develop that. If they really wanted to help the, the public, we should be developing homes where they can use the, the infrastructure that doesn't have to be paid by the city and county, and that it's, it's built into the home. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. We have a question. We have a question for you. We were told that you are making this up. That I'm making this up? That you're making all that up. What's your answer to that? About making all this up. <laughs> no, you know who it is. Come on now. Think about it. Who would say something like that on YouTube? Little Damien the fucking <laughs> There you go. You got your answer. Go to the Ooh. <laughs> in landlord injustices. <laughs> we have a question. <laughs> <laughs> you know it was cool. <laughs> Damien, come on. Let the bones come from their graves and she Okay, let's see if we can uh, interview a couple. And my Lord and Justin. Hello, it's me again. So Hello. We were, <laughs> we were uh, brought to the conclusion Woo! down there that uh, another individual said that there was other means of how Bishop Estates can utilize their money that benefit people as a whole. He was talking about sustainability and other types of structures. Okay. And uh, stuff like that. What is your feeling on how Bishop Estate should be utilizing their money for the people better? I love it. Just like that. I Using mean, it uh, to help the community to get Hawaiian money to circulate in Hawaii, not to use it for your own pay, for your own employers, hiring outside attorneys to do your dirty work. You know, things like that we can avoid, and it's just wasteful and useless. Instead, invest it in something that will help the Hawaiian people. Not just the tourism coming here or the businesses thriving, but the small businesses, the Hawaiian people, and things like that. You know, there's so many ways besides the ways, you know, the obvious ways. Well, you know, Bishop of States is looking at it as in a corporate way that they want to keep themselves sustainable. Right. So they're trying to save every little buck there is, right? And, and 
what we're seeing with your particular family is it seems like there's an objective of other means for your property you know and uh, by them kicking you out they're obviously thinking it's it's more profitable to throw you guys out instead of fixing the issues than uh, making it more sustainable for you which would be more sustainable for the next family or the next right, how, right. how you know other other means to I mean, them to them it's just another lot you know we've seen it before we've lived there for six years and they've broken down houses build it up again and have new buyers and sellers in and they do it all the time you know a few of our neighbors have left they just tore down their house built a new one and then they look for the next buyer and charge them their rent they don't see it as families coming in you know they see it as another lot and another paycheck yeah and this is money that was all devised to be for utilized by right. by the hawaiians right. you know and by people to to make the the economy and the community more uh, perform better, to, to live better, right. you know, to live more in harmony with the things that's going on on these islands. Right. You know? I think we just need to have a balance. Hawaii is, you know, now we have integrated the corporate world and the native Hawaiians, so we have to have a balance. You know, it can't be who came here first, who has the most money and power. We Everyone has to compromise because as our state is the Aloha State, you know, we, we work together, everyone's like a family. And that includes the businesses. We just need to find a compromise and be fair to everyone below you. Yeah, a compromise that people can live with now while we're trying to work out all these issues. Right. So we're not throwing people on the street and right. hurting families, right. hurting our economy, you know, and just uh, just abiding by corporate greed. Right, right. Okay. Well, thank you very, very much. much for your time. Yep. Visit the state So it's been about an hour since you were last on. <laughs> We've had a lot of interviews, a lot of different takes on things. Yeah. Is there anything you would like to add from your earlier one, or just something to bring out? Because we got a lot more viewers that come that jumped in here. <laughs> okay, I'm saying this to the world: no more tyranny by the one percent of the corporations that are holding up the 99 percent hostage. We are speaking out, and so the rest of the 99 percent of the world need to come and speak out. Because Bishop Estate owns, they own three quarters of the land in Hawaii. They are the largest private landowner. They are the richest institution in the country and in the world. So they are workers that are employed there, the managers and the trustees and the CEO and everybody that are holding these high positions. They are responsible to make sure that they take care of the beneficiaries and conduct the business in a aloha and compassionate way. We have a law in Hawaii, the law of the land. It's Hawaii Revised Statutes called Aloha. And so every business person, every leader, the governor, the legislators, anybody in power here in Hawaii, they are required by the law of Aloha to conduct the business using Aloha. Bishop Estate does not conduct their business using Aloha. It's ironic when the trust that they are given the responsibility to oversee was started by Bernice Pawahi Bishop out of her aloha and compassion for her people to educate the Hawaii children so that their families can be at a better economic status. Here we are, they are evicting us from our home. We own the home, they own the land. Instead of fixing the flood, they flooded us four major times. Instead of fixing it, they said, we're evicting you and so, Keep quiet. And so, Bishop Estate may be that there are all these other people that have sued you before. You have paid them money to shut their mouths and go away and seal the decision so the public don't see it. That has been the practice of Bishop Estate. 
but not with this family because you're not paying us to shut up because our thing from the beginning is to tell our story to the world so this kind of injustice can stop because we suffered, we were devastated. Four major flights, including our dear friend and homeowner who committed suicide. He committed suicide. I buried him. My husband, my family, we buried him. And he left a suicidal letter to my family to tell us how he was bullied, intimidated, harassed by Bishop Estate. And that's why he was driven to deep depression and had to take his own life. Uh, so we made a promise. Because we are cultural, spiritual people, we are Christians, we made a promise to him that we will make sure out of our moral and ethical responsibility that we will make sure we tell the world his story and our story so that the injustice by Bishop Estate will end. So Bishop Estate, I hope you hear this because, because no more, we are not going to be silent anymore. So conduct the business in aloha and compassion and conduct the business where you don't evict people, where you don't raise the, the lease amount illegally where you withhold the consent unreasonably, and a lot of other injustices that you have committed to our family and other families before us. So now we're taking our case to the people because we know your attorneys have already told us in court that you have all the money in the world to drag out the case for years and uh, we will lose and that you will bankrupt our attorney. Well, Bishop Estate, I want the world to know what you said because that is not your money, okay? That is not your money. It's the trust that was given to educate the Hawaiian children. So I am not afraid of the money because I don't worship money. The only person I'm afraid of is God. Is God. No other person should be afraid of another person. And Bishop has said if you make decisions based totally on money making power and greed, well, you will always look over your shoulder because there'll be an.